Hello and welcome to this session. In this video, I want to show you how to set up Visual Studio for Assembly, MASM, or MASM. So once you log into your Visual Studio, you're going to click on Create New Project. And from here, I'm going to click on Empty Project. Once this information is correct, I'm going to click Create. I'm going to get rid of all of this. We don't need any of this for this. So I'm going to delete this one and this one. We don't need any of these folders. Now over here, I'm going to click on the project itself and I'm going to come down over here and add an item. I'm going to call it, let's say, MASM test dot ASM. This is important. Make sure that you do add dot ASM and C++ file is highlighted over here and Visual C++ is highlighted over here. So I'm going to click add and this is added. So now I'm going to click again over here on top. I'm going to come to Build Dependencies. I'm going to click on Build Customization, and I'm going to clean and click on MASM. So now I'm going to come over here, and we're going to go to Properties. And right over here, I'm going to look for Microsoft MicroAssembler, and I'm clicking Apply. And once you do that, you're going to get this information in here. We're going to say OK. And now we have our environment to type our assembly code. OK, I'm going to quickly write a, a program, an assembly program that adds two 32-bit integers. And um, since this is not a tutorial for the actual programming, I'm just going to do this very quick so I can show you guys how we use the debugger in here. Okay, now that we have the code, let's go over it very quick as a little overview and then we're going to start with the debugger. So right now, uh, the very first two line of codes are the comments, as you can see over there. And then the next couple of lines are just some information, for example, the type of processor, memory model, amount of stack space, and the exit prototype, which we're invoking it in line 19 to exit the program. Now, right after that, we have the data. For example, the sum is the variable that we're using. And the question mark in there just represents that there is no initial initialization in here. And then moving down, the dot .code is uh, the code directive indicating the beginning of the program. And then the main procedure that um, it's going to start. Right after that, we have the move EAX7, and then we're adding 4 to that, and we are going to be saving it, uh, sa saving the sum. We're going to add them together, and then we're going to see the sum. So let's go ahead and run the debugger in here. Before I show you guys how we're going to use the breakpoint, I'm going to show you ha what happens if we just run it like that without a breakpoint. So if you click on that, something like this will show up. And you're really not going to be able to see anything and or print anything. You're not going to know what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and close this over here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put a breakpoint right next to line 15. And this is where I'm going to start with my EAX7 right over here. And now again, I'm going to run the program. Once I run the program, I'm going to be able to see the memory. I'm going to be able to see the registers and the watch over here. You may not be able to see any of this because um, you haven't set it up in that way. But let me show you how you can get there. So if you click on debug, click on Windows, and go all the way down, you're going to be able to see the, the registers, the memory, the disassembly. These are, the, these are the tools that you're going to be using a lot while you're going to be using assembly language. Um, let's go ahead and go through this program and see what happens. Um, over here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just very quickly type and percent sum. 
so I can actually start seeing what's inside of the memories. If I right click in here, oh wait, you're not going to be able to see this. Let me move this over here very quickly so you can see what I see in the, in the side. If I right click over here, I can see right now it has been set to one byte of integer. Um, but since we're dealing with four byte, let's just click on four bytes. And now I can see this um, like that. And um, let's run the program. Let's go ahead and do the use our debugger. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to just step through one line at a time to see what happens in my registers and in my memory. So right now I just moved down here and I can see that EAX has changed to seven. Great, that's exactly what I wanted it to see. Now let's do one more step. Let's go to the next line and see what happens. So I'm gonna step through again. And now I see that this is changed to B, which is correct because this represents 11 and 7 plus 4 is 11. Pay attention to over here, see what happens when I do one more a step into. So now this has changed to B as well, which means that now in my memory, the 7, the 11 has been saved. Uh, let's right click over here one more time. And right now it's showing the hexadecimal display. I'm going to click on sign display which is going to show me the integer and here is the value 11. Now over here um, right now I'm gonna type add the item as sum and look what happens the value it's gonna show as 11. And if you don't know where this watch window is you're gonna be able to go over here under debug you can go to window and right over here is watch and you have windows one through four watches that you can use and uh, by clicking on any of these you can dock it to the rest of your windows and that's where I have this in here now I can simply stop the debugger and we're gonna go back to the original environment of our program this will conclude this session. I hope this video helped you set up your Visual Studio team with Assembly, MASM, or MASM, and also help you understand the debugger in this environment a little bit better.